Hello, and welcome to Elaine A. Power's Reptile Side Chat. Today, I'd like to talk about names and the names that I have given to my reptilian children who live in my house. It recently came up in a discussion of a post I put in Facebook. So I thought maybe I would share some of the interesting name stories that uh, have occurred over the years. Now this is Myrtle. Some of you have probably met Myrtle, but the important thing is, is she came with the name Myrtle. Um, I didn't name her Myrtle, um, but she's a tortoise. And so everyone would call her Myrtle the turtle, even though she was a tortoise. So she is actually the impetus for the beginning of my picture book writing career, because she asked me to write a book that told the differences between turtles and tortoises. So I want to thank the young man's mother who named her Myrtle uh, when she was given to me when he was going into the armed services and needed to find new homes for many of his reptilian friends. So Myrtle got her name because she came with that. All right, well fast forward a few years. I had moved from New Jersey to Arizona and I love tortoises. Um, I had brought two tortoises with me, Duke the large sulcata tortoise. He too came with his own name and so he stayed Duke. But there was a rescue here who had more redfoot tortoises to be adopted. And so I went and met them and I chose two very small tortoises. Now my mother who was living in my home with me was not real thrilled with the idea of me getting any more tortoises or actually any more reptilian pets of any kind. The ones I had were more than enough for her. But these two little baby Redfoot tortoises were so cute that I, I had to have them, and they moved into a turtle table in my reptile room. Well, with good food and nurturing, the tortoises got a lot bigger. So, the biggest of the two, I named Gladiola. Now, my mother's name was Gladys. And she had been named Gladys by her mother because her favorite flower was the gladiola. So I thought, well, okay, I will honor my mother with the name, uh, with naming a tortoise after her. Maybe she'd like it better knowing that I had honored her with gladiola, the tortoise. Uh, short, long story short, no, she wasn't thrilled. Um, even, <laughs> she said, even naming the tortoise after me, does not make me change my mind that I didn't want any more tortoises in the house. Now, uh, when they grew so rapidly, they outgrew the tortoise table quite rapidly. So uh, I had them loose in the reptile room. Unfortunately, Duke, the sulcata tortoise, likes females of any species. So he was going after her. So because Myrtle was free roaming in the main part of the house, I let gladiola free roam as well. As long as they took turns going past my mother, she didn't realize that they were two different tortoises. But unfortunately came the day when they both decided to stroll in front of her together and uh, she realized what had happened. But this is, so this is gladiola. Now the second of the two I adopted, I named Rose. Uh, for some reason, I have always liked the name Rose. My favorite doll growing up, I named Rose. And so for this small tortoise whose sex I didn't know at the time, I named him Rose. Yes, Rose is a male. But um, I figure Rose fits for uh, any uh, sex of tortoise, you know, a, a rose, by any other name would be as an adorable a tortoise. Now I want you to look at the top of his head. He has a really nice color pet. Now these are red-footed tortoises, so they have the red legs, but the 
skill coloration on their heads can be different. And so he has really spectacular yellow dots on his top of his head, which will become uh, more important when we meet another tortoise later on. All right, so those are the three that I had for many, many years. All right, well then, um, I got a couple more hatchlings, put them here carefully. And these are a different species of tortoise. These are desert tortoises. And so we, so they were hatchlings. They, they weren't supposed to be allowed to, uh, the, their parents hadn't, weren't supposed to be allowed to mate, but they did. And so as far as the foster program, I ended up with these two guys. And so they lived together, but I had to come up with names with them. And, and I went through a whole bunch of different names, you know, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, but uh, that just didn't seem to fit them well. So over time, put down that one there, I, I liked the color pattern on the back of this tortoise's shell. And so I named this tortoise Mosaic, because the scale pie patterns kind of reminded me of a mo tile mosaic. Well, the other tortoise, what didn't have any of those pretty markings on its back. And we, we don't know what sex they are just yet, but they're getting older. But does have such a nice dome. And because the dome is so lovely and it's so nicely shaped, I named this tortoise Dome. Now I do reserve the right to change Dome's name later on uh, should something more interesting strike me or a, another aspect of the personality comes out. All right. Sometimes, to put these tortoises over here. Now this, this isn't a tortoise, of course. This is a turtle, very shy turtle. Um, this is actually an Eastern box turtle. Now, this turtle is named Mesa because that's where he or she was found um, after hatching or maybe as a year old, was wandering the desert outside Mesa, Arizona. Now, if you're paying attention, I said this was an Eastern box turtle. They're only found east of the Mississippi. And here in the Sonoran Desert, we're kind of way west of the Mississippi. So it was obviously this was somebody's pet or somebody's pet's offspring that got away and took off for the desert. Well. Eastern box turtles need a little more moisture in their life. Uh, they like to have grasslands and forests and, and be near ponds, although they don't have to, to be swimming in the water. And so it was rescued and given to me for adoption. So I would name this one Mesa in honor of the place where he or she was found. Yes, a pretty box turtle, as you can see. It's an Eastern box turtle. All right. Well, another tortoise that I got as a hatchling. I'll introduce you to next. Okay. All right, so this is Flipper. Uh, I did like the TV show as a child. I am very partial to dolphins and marine creatures, but that's not why this tortoise was named Flipper, although I confess I do sing the theme song to her quite often. No, as a hatchling, I was always finding her flipped over on her back. Now, fortunately, she was able to flip herself back, usually, you know, given time and effort, but I was frequently going in and helping her get back over uh, on her four feet where she belonged and not flipped over on her back, which was way too common an occurrence. So this tortoise was named because of her proclivity for flipping herself over and then flailing for a while before she was finally able to grab onto something and pull herself back over. So this is Flipper. Okay, go for it, Flipper. All right, and then the last of our tortoises that we're going to meet today is a rescue that I got from the vet. Uh, when I got this tortoise, 
had very severe pyramiding, which is improving with time and nutrition, uh, but there'll always be some pyramiding of the shell. That's an indicator of bad nutrition, bad care conditions. But so I had to come up with a name. It, it didn't have a name, but um, so I named it Amarilla. And I named it Amarilla because if you look at the head, it's pretty much all yellow. Now remember, this is a red foot tortoise. You know, most of the others have either red or yellow scales. But this one's head is primarily all yellow. So I named her Amarillo, which isn't after the city in Texas. No, it's because the Spanish word for yellow is Amarillo. And since we live here in Tucson, Arizona, which has a, a large Mexican Spanish influence, I thought Amarillo was a good name. And it would work for either sex, depending on which sex Amarillo turned out to be. So I hope when you get pets of your own that you use some creativity in naming your pets so they too can have interesting names. So this concludes another episode of Elaine A. Powers Reptile Side Chat. Check out my website at elaineapowers.com uh, and lyricpower.net. And don't forget to look up my books, such as Don't Call Me Turtle, which was inspired by Myrtle the Tortoise. She's not a turtle. Bye for now. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. And subscribe. Every time you comment or share one of my videos, it helps me make more videos. And the more videos I make, the more people we reach.